and welcome back to Alice Talks Football and welcome back to another live show and there's a lot to talk about in today's live show because we're not just going to be talking about transfer news we're going to be talking about games football games the weekend the Premier League we've got a lot to talk about in today's video we are top of the league guys say we are top of the league yeah we are top of the I that wrong. top of the league only 37 games to go seven stop the count stop the gap now but anyway actually what do we talk about in today's video but slap that like button and subscribe down below we're 27 subscribers away from 16.2k 27 subscribers away from 16.2k as well so do subscribe but we're gonna be talking about manchester united top of the league we'll talk a bit about the leeds game of course man city losing we'll talk about Grealish's debut we're obviously going to talk about how harry kane gets treated differently to paul pogba we're going to get talking about camavinga can camavinga join manchester united what is the situation with that is the ruben never still off What's the latest on Sanagas? What's the latest on Paul Popper's future? As well as a lot more. So make sure you are liked, make sure you subscribe and all that. But before I even get into anything, I think you have to say it has been the perfect weekend for Manchester United. Could this weekend have got any better? So Arsenal lose on the Friday. So you get to banter Arsenal. You play Leeds and you absolutely fucking thrash Leeds on the Saturday. But Ryan is also announced Sancho has his debut. And then the Sunday's topped off by Manchester City losing to Spurs, a Spurs team without the best player, Harry Kane, and pretty much being outplayed. So for me, it's been the perfect weekend. I don't know about you guys, but it's been the perfect weekend for me. So get your live comments in down below. My Wi-Fi is uh, doing its normal thing and just being absolutely shit. But let's get into a little bit of Camavinga news because Camavinga liked um, Greenwood's Instagram picture of him celebrating the win versus Leeds. And you know what United fans are like? Oh, Camavinga's liked Greenwood's pick. He must be joining. We're going to be talking about that. We are going to be talking about that as well. Uh, rest in peace to Gerd Muller and all that. And as Nick says, actually, I want to quickly talk about this. So, Varane's going to get number four, but Phil Jones refused to give up his shirt. Like, Phil Jones, I'm sorry. Why the fuck would you give up? Like, why? Like, you offer nothing to this club. You're using up our wages. All you're doing is giving our medical staff a bit more work to do. And the, the, the littlest thing you could do is be like, okay, I've rugged off this club for long enough. Give Varane the number four shirt. But no, Phil Jones thinks, you know what? Now, I'm going to have the number four shirt. What, like, seriously, Phil Jones. You didn't play a minute last season and you think, you know, four times Champions League winner, a World Cup winner, uh, winner and a like five billion times La Liga trophies winner just doesn't deserve your shirt. I'm just, fuck off, honestly. Honestly, I just I just laugh. But yes, Manchester City did lose. But we are going to quickly talk about Camavinga. And we will talk about this. Mike and Nick, as Nick Morris said, Michael Richards hit the nail on the head. Kane not turning up to training and being called a saint. Yet Pogba has not asked the league and is getting abused by fans. We will 100% talk about that. But what's going on with Camavinga? Well, he's liking Greenwood's post. So he's obviously going to join us, guys. Obviously, Camavinga is coming to Man United. He's liked Greenwood's Instagram post. Confirmed. Tier 1 source. He liked it that. I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. The situation is, you know, I want to make a third and final signing. That third and final signing Man United want is a midfielder. We no longer want a right back. We're happy to keep Delo. The third and final signing we want is a midfielder. Now, the situation is, to really get a midfielder, we'd have to offload Jesse Lingard and Andres Pereira. Now, I'm 99% sure Andres Pereira will go, and I'm 70% Jesse Ling sure Jesse Lingard will go. However, we know from Fabrizio Romano, the Donna transfers, that Camavinga is the first choice midfield target. Camavinga is a dream signing. The situation with Camavinga is he hasn't made his mind up about where he wants to go. Go. But what we do know is Camavinga's idol, and, sorry, Camavinga's idol is Paul Pogba. Camavinga's idol is Paul Pogba. Camavinga is Oli's dream signing. Uh, Rens want Camavinga to leave this summer because if not, they're going to lose him on the free. So Rens are really pushing for him to leave this summer. Camavinga's agent has good connections with Manchester United and wants him to go to Manchester United. So United want him. Uh, Rens wanted to go United. Cam you know, everything's sort of working in our way for Camavinga. The situation is Camavinga cannot go to Spain. So if he wants Spain, he's going to have to run down his contract and leave on a free. And, and Rennes just won't let that happen. Well, they, they might have to let it happen, but they don't want that to happen. Camavinga wants Spain. OK, if Camavinga wants Spain, he can't go to Spain because financially the Spanish clubs are in the mud. If Camavinga wants PSG, then he's a mug because he's not going to get any game time. What's so fucking ever? You're going to have to compete with about 100 players. But, you know, that is what it is. Plus, Cam uh, sorry, PSG wasted a lot of money on Messi's wages. PSG aren't in the best financial position to get Camavinga. So the situation is United are in the best financial position to get Camavinga. United want Camavinga. We've made contact with Camavinga. We've made contact with Rennes. 
we're in a strong position to sign Camavinga. You know, we can probably get him anyway, but selling Lingard means we could definitely, most definitely afford him only 30 million pounds. And he liked Greenwood's post on Instagram. So that, there's a lot of things adding up. But what we know with, from Fabrizio Romano is United want him. He's He hasn't made up his mind. So the situation with Camavinga is if we make a third and final signing this transfer the window, because I'm not counting to me as a signer, come on, guys. If we make a third and final signing this transfer the window, I believe it will be Camavinga. The only thing is, if Camavinga doesn't want Man United, he won't come to Manchester United. And I'm, I'm in a situation where, like, United want you, United will go for you, and we're playing well. Like, why? Duh, uh, uh. The only situation, if he doesn't want Manchester United, he's not going to come to us. So, Camavinga, I'm going to tell you this now, I'm going to tell you this then, it's a waiting game. But when you beat a team called Leeds 5-1, when it looks like Paul Pogba could be more and more likely to stay, Camavinga, come join us. Renz want you to join us. Your agent wants us to join us. Oli wants you to join us. The fans want you to join us. Come join us. I mean, come on. Yeah, we're better than City. We're top of the league, Camavinga. We're top of the league. You know, you go to PSG, you might win easy trophies, but I don't think you'll get game time at PSG. I mean, you know, we're only going to soul show. You might not get game time either, but it is what it is. Alice, will I talk about the Manchester City loss? Of course, I'm going to talk about the Manchester City loss. I felt like a proper Spurs fan. I felt like a proper Spurs fan. When Son, when Son scored, I was like, yeah! I felt like a proper Spurs fan. But to be fair, out of all the top six clubs, Spurs is the one I've got the least beef with because probably the most irrelevant, aren't they? Although, to be fair, I'm probably nicest about Chelsea. But then I do like a lot of Chelsea players. But talking of Manchester City, Manchester City have lost Grealish's debut. What did you guys make of Grealish's debut? Actually, I'm gonna, I want to see what you guys think of that down below because you know what? If Bruno played like that, he'd be getting a lot of stick. He'd be betting to Bruno Fernandes and all that. But I don't actually think Greenwich was that bad. I think he was one of City's better players, but I don't think City were good. And you know what? It feels really good that Manchester City look really shit. I just want to say something. Benjamin Mendy, for over 50 million quid, is the biggest fraud in football. It's the biggest fraud in football. How the fuck did they pay 50 million quid for Benjamin Mendy? I mean, sorry, he is shocking. He's absolutely shocking. Ake and Benjamin Mendy cost £25 million more than Luke Shaw and Varane. And unless you're fucking blind, you'd be taking Luke Shaw and Varane over Ake and Mendy any day of the week. That left-back, centre-back pairing of Ake and Mendy was atrocious. It really makes me grateful for Maguire and Shaw. It really made me grateful for Maguire and Shaw watching that. But Manchester City was so open at the back, guys. Manchester City were ridiculously open at the back. And I was thinking, man, I wish we were playing them because if that was... If that was Greenwood, if that was Rashford, if that was Sancho, we would have we would have scored three or four because you know Lucas Moura looked really really good, Bergwijn looked good, and Son looked good. But you know what, United players are like with a lot of space. I think if that was us, we'd have scored three or four, honestly. And talking of the Manchester City game, please get your live chats in down below. I'm going to just do live chats. But as Nick Morris says, Michael Richards hit the nail on the head with Kane not turning up to training. Gary Neville and Graham Twatsunas. We know you know I hate Graham Sunas. You know I don't like Graham Sunas. They're like. Basically saying Paul Pogba's worse than Harry Kane. I'm sorry, Harry Kane, Harry Kane literally said on TV that basically you he wants to leave Spurs. Yes, Paul Pogba's agent said he wants to leave Man United, but Paul Pogba's never come out and said he wants to leave Man United. Paul Pogba's never missed training. Harry Kane openly said he wants to leave Spurs and missed training. Yet Harry Kane is a set and Paul Pogba is some kind of virus. I'm sorry, Mr. Paul Pogba got four assists yesterday. Mr. Paul Pogba's been very, very professional. You know, Oli Oli ain't a stupid manager. If Paul Popper wasn't being professional, Oli Oli would have, you know, I'm sorry. Yeah, the Paul Popper slander is just a joke. Like, they're just the way the, the, the media treats English players, like when, when Rashford has a stinker, we won't talk about it. If Marsh has a stinker, he needs to be sold. The media is just a virus. It's literally like if you're English, you can get away with it. Phil Foden is bloody God's gift. What the fuck did he do in the Euros? F all, but you're more busy talking about Bruno Fernandes and shocking Euros. Honestly, the English buyers. But as Paul says in the chat, Manchester will always be red, guys. So if Manchester is red, slap that like button because you know what? They're 13th, they're mid table, they're where Arsenal are. But we, we are top of the league. Say we are top of the league. Now, yeah, we've got 37 games to go, and will we be top of the league in 37 match weeks' times? Probably not, but embrace it, take it in, like it, and of course, do subscribe. If you're new, because we are 27 subscribers away from 16.2k, so hit that subscribe button, guys. Hit that subscribe button. But yeah, I want to address a few more live chats. We will talk a bit more about Camavinga news and Pogba news 
as well. But the live chat's looking really, really interesting. And Phantom says, Chelsea, Liverpool, and Man U completing the EPL1. Thank you for the super chat, Phantom. Sorry I read that out a bit late. I just completely missed it. So sorry I missed that super chat, by the way. But yeah, mate, let City, you're out of it. No, City will be back in it. It's just one game. They're probably fresh Norwich 6 0. Uh, fair thing is. But yeah, keep those live chats in, guys. I'm going to read out a load of live chats now and all of that. And I will get into some more news and all of that. But Fred Pereira, Lingard and Jones need to go. Matic should stay. Matic should stay for four games. And if Jones was at least, I guarantee they'll retire the number four show. Yeah, I mean, Phil Jones, Man United legend. You've got to retire the show of him. Oh, this is an interesting point. I'm going to talk about this in Friday's live stream from the match preview for the game. What's your starting lineup for Southampton? De Gea, wan Saka, Varane, Maguire, Shaw, Matic, Donny, Bruno, Pogba, Cavani, if available. I still go with Greenwood. I still go with Greenwood. Sancho, I, that would be my lineup for Southampton, but with Greenwood in. That would be my lineup. 4 or 19, no problem for Varane. Give it a lot. You know what? Nath, sorry, Nathan Ake costs more money than Raphael Varane. Nathan Ake costs more money than Raphael Varane. Nathan, I'm injured. Then when I play, I'm shit. And Manchester City normally lose when I play, I'm shit Ake. Costs more than World Cup winner, four times Champions League winner. Varane, you're telling me Bournemouth got relegated and they still got £42 million for a bang average Nathan Ake, while Real Madrid is surrendering us for around £38 million. You're telling me. You're telling me this. You're tell love it. I, I love it. I love it. I, lo I love it. This is the perfect weekend for me. Arsenal lose, refresh leads, Varane's announced, Sancho debut and Man City lose. I'm sorry, this is the perfect weekend and Paul Pogba is happy, guys. Paul Pogba is smiling, Paul Pogba's posting all over his Instagram about Manchester United and you know what I said about Paul Pogba? I said Paul Pogba will leave on the free at the end of the, at the, end of the summer or Paul Pogba will sign a new deal. And Paul Pogba will sign a new deal if A, Manchester United have a good season and B, he has a good season. And if Paul Pogba can continue this form, I know it's one game, but if Paul Pogba keeps playing like this and Manchester United keep winning games, Paul Pogba will stay. And if Paul Pogba stays and we get a top DM next season, we will be a force. Now, we can still get a DM this season, but it wouldn't be a top, top and DD like DM. But I'm just saying... Paul Popper stays, CDM, Haaland 60 mil next year when City go and eventually get Kane. And we are we are in the world. Just, guys, I'm sorry. We are living it. Please hit that like button, guys. We're going to go for 150 likes by the end of the stream. We've got about 100 people watching. So do smash that like button. And, of course, subscribe down below to Alice Talk Support if you're new. If you're new to the channel, you've not seen my face before and you want to stay up to date with daily Manchester United content, what are you doing? Go and subscribe because we're bantering Arsenal, we're bantering City. I'm reading a few live chats. It's an interactive live stream. I, I try and make my live streams to involve you fans and you viewers as much as possible in a sense. So if you really want to get involved in the live streams, discuss with me, chat with me, you know, comment down below because I try and get everyone involved. And I'm just saying that camera thing you could potentially happen. We've got to keep an eye on that in the coming weeks once he decides on his future. Paul Popper's looking like staying. City in the mud. Like, it's, it's just been a good weekend, guys. It has just been a good weekend. Renz asked Camavinga to decide what he wants. Camavinga has to stay at Renz or leave. Renz will be fuming with him if he just leaves on a free. Renz will be fuming with him. And the situation is he can't go to Madrid. Camavinga cannot go to, Ma to Madrid because they can't afford him. He cannot go to Barcelona because they can't afford him. PSG shouldn't really be able to get him because of financial fair play. But when you're as rich as PSG, you can pay the right people and get away with breaking the rules, as Manchester City do. Hence, they never got a Champions League ban. But we're in a situation, you know, in the strongest position to sign Camavinga because I've said this a thousand times. Camavinga's our dream signing. For Britcher Romano confirmed, Camavinga's our dream signing. For Britcher Romano confirmed, United want a midfielder, not a right back. Lingard's looking likely to leave. Pereira, I'm pretty sure, will be gone in the next week. Okay, remember that, yeah. Camavinga's agents want him to go to Manchester United. Rens need to sell Camavinga this summer because they do not want to use him on a free. And we could mail with friends and get it for 25 million pounds. We're pushing for the move. We've made contact with Camavinga. We've made contact with Rens. We're just waiting for Camavinga to decide. And Camavinga might be like, you know, I want to leave this summer, but I can't really go to Spain. Um, will I get game time at PSG? Well, look, my idol's Paul Pogba. He's playing amazing at Man United. I want to play with Paul Pogba. I want to play with Varane. Because you know what, Camavinga? I would too. So you never know. You never know. Joe says, after watching Newcastle West Ham today, I can wholeheartedly say Declan Rice is the missing missing piece in the puzzle. Well, he was a little bit poor against... Um, I watched the first half and he looked rubbish, but did he have a good second half? Because he got spun by St. Maximan. 
Camavinga is a signing for the future and he isn't what we need right now. He's only 18. I don't see us getting anyone and it worries me, says Shane. I do agree with this comment. I would love Camavinga at Manchester United. And I think the reason I talk about Camavinga so much is because he's the only realistic signing to come into Manchester United this summer because I believe we can get Camavinga. I don't think we're going to get Neves anymore. I don't think we're going to get Sound again. We're not going to sign on as much as you love him. We're not going to sign Declan Rice because of just financially. The reason, that's why I talk about Camavinga. But the question is, if you sign Camavinga, does he start ahead of at Fred? Probably not. Should he start him with Fred? I would. Um, and when you sign Camavinga, because he's only 18, he's not going to cover and he's not going to be able to hold. He's not going to do what Prime Matic can do. And that is the situation. Do we hold out and wait till next summer we can get an out-and-out -out CDM that can do what Prime Matic does? Probably not, because we're in such a good position this summer that I just think we need a CDM to finish the puzzle. And then next summer when Cavani goes, you can look at Holland, you can look at strengthening your, your backup right back. But it's, it's a frustrating situation because I like Camavinga, but there's... I would say we do need an out-and-out -out CDM more than we need Camavinga. Grealish was shocking. Grealish was all right. He was one of the better players, but he wasn't great, was he? He's not worth £100 million. I think Grealish was a Maguire kind of player in the sense of they're a good player, but they're just a little bit overpriced. I'm not going to say overrated, but he is a bit overrated at the moment because everyone's saying Grealish is clear of Bruno. All those idiots on TikTok. So all those idiots on TikTok that were like, Grealish is clear of Bruno Fernandes just because Bruno had a shit Euros. I bet you're feeling that right twats. I bet you're feeling that right twats right now. Um, but Greece is an okay player, but he's not worth 100 mil. I, Nathan Ake costs more money. Guys, I don't even care about Greece for 100 million. Nathan Ake costs more money than Raphael Varane. A bang average Nathan Ake that got relegated, Manchester City paid more money for than we paid for four times Champions League winner, Raphael Varane. I mean, literally, I could just laugh. I could just... I love it. I lo and I love that Benjamin Mendy's shocking as well. Look... This is the situation. Man City started last season shit. They're probably going to win the league. But banter them why you can. We're top of the league. Say we are top of the league. Say we are top of the league. And look, do I think we're going to be top of the league in 37 match weeks time? No. Do I think City could be above us by the end of the season? Yes. So that is why I'm completely embracing that Manchester City lost and that we won. I'm just enjoying it. I'm just enjoying it. So I say go as well. Let's go get another midfielder in case of injury. Well, all the midfielders will get injured and we'll probably play um, someone that... We'll probably play Pereira over Donny van der Beek. This is when, this is when like, Matic, Fred and Tom and I get injured and Pereira's playing over Donny van der Beek. You just know Oli. Imagine if Oli played, like, Pereira over van der Beek. I have to say, although Tom and I and Fred were decent versus Leeds, uh, Southampton's a very different game to Leeds because I think with Leeds, you know, we didn't have much possession. As you know, Leeds had more possession than us and we counter-attacked Leeds and we got in the space in behind. But I think with Southampton, when we play Southampton, we're going to have a lot more possession. And I think you need to play Donny and Matic in a pivot because one, they'll be a lot fresher than McTominay and Fred. And two, when you have possession, I think this is my situation. I don't mind McFred when, we, when we're counter-attacking. I don't mind playing McFred when we're going to counter-attack a team. OK, when there's going to be space in behind, we're going to counter-attack a team and they can just get it to the quick attackers. But when we're playing possession football, you can't play McFred for me. Because when Man United have possession, they pass. And I think Donny and Matic are the best midfielders we have in possession to go in the pivot. We know Donny can do a job on the pivot and we know it looks good next to Matic. So for Southampton, I would 100% keep that same team, but swap out James for Sancho and swap out McFred for Donny and Matic, if you want my honest opinion on that. And Nick said he most probably start the same team at the weekend. Uh, no point in rushing Sancho and Varane into a far more physical league as one mistake fans will abuse them. I think you can put Sancho in for Daniel James and I think you could put Varane in. I really, I think it's Southampton. It's not Manchester City. I think you put Varane in if, if Oli believes Varane is ready and had enough training. Pogba ain't going nowhere. Well, Pogba's happy. Pogba's smiling. Pogba's posting about Man United and then we're winning. And Paul Pogba, I tell you this now, Paul Pogba will not leave on a free if he has a good season and we have a good season. If we have win a trophy, have a good season, he has a good season. He won't want to leave on a free because at the end of the day, like, I think Paul Pogba is, is just wants to win trophies and he just wants to be playing his best football. I think Paul Pogba knows that he played brilliant and better football at Juventus. I think Paul Pogba knows he plays better for France and he probably thinks it's United. But if Paul Pogba starts playing his best football for Man United and United win trophies, there's no reason for Paul Pogba to leave. Because like we are the we are the club of his childhood. We are the you know, Real Madrid is probably the biggest club in the world, then us in second. we he's in the best league in the world. Like that's my situation. I hope Man United get Camavinga. I hope we do too. We've got two weeks left of the transfer window. We're just over two weeks left of the transfer window. So I would say we will have an idea in the next week if we're going to get Camavinga or not. I have a feeling we're going to bring in that third and final signing on deadline day. I have a feeling we're going to sign a player on deadline day. I will be doing a long live stream on transfer deadline day, by the way, guys, which is probably going to kill me off. But we're going to do a really long live stream on transfer deadline day. So do subscribe for that. And if you are watching right now and you're not subscribed to the channel, this is Alice Talks Football. This is a Manchester United fan channel. 
Well, I do pretty much daily Manchester United content. I do about six live streams a week. I normally take one day a week off, where I keep you up to date on all the latest Manchester United news and transfer news. I do match previews. I do match reactions. I do watch-alongs. I do weekly updates on like everything going on. Like If there's any relevant transfer news update, there will be a live stream right away. If we sign a player, I'll just be live right away to know if I got you guys. If we sell a player, I'll be live. Like I keep you, I keep up to date with all the latest Manchester United news, and I try and make my live streams really interactive. Where I like to uh, talk to you guys in the live chat. So any live chats you put in, I do like to read and address them and get everyone's thoughts and opinions on the channel. So if that does sound like your stuff, do subscribe and hit that like button. Hit that like button. Camavinga would be a decent signing. He absolutely would. Lingard and Pereira look like to leave. I'm pretty sure Pereira will go because he's willing to take a wage cut, and I think Lingard will go. But I think Lingard's like a smalling. Well, we don't sell them till like the last couple of days of the window just to see if we can get a bit more money because we were holding out to get about three or four million pounds more for Chris Smalling from Roma and then we we're just like, oh, fuck, we need to sell them now. Really good question here from um, Ed F. Peter saying, what is my, what's your say about Van Der Beek? Van Der Beek, quality player, prefer to Tom and Fred, think he can do a job in a pivot, think he's a great player. Play him more. I think Van der Beek needs game time. He's a good player. He's had a preseason. He's whenever he's played next to Matic in a pivot, end of the season, preseason, he's looked good. He showed up more Tomlin for a time and time again. He's a good player. Ollie needs to use him more. And I tell you what, for me, it's not about does Van der Beek start every game. For me, it's more about can Ollie rotate his squad? Because I think there's times where you go, Ollie, you you're playing the same lineup almost every game. And I think the situation with Van der Beek was more the frustration that Oli wasn't rotating his squad. Because if you look at Pep Guardiola that won the league last season, he rotated his squad a lot and they were a lot fresher. And I think they won the league because of that. And I think with Van der Beek, we really need to just rotate the squad a bit more. Um, because like, even if you want to play Mottomlay and Fred over him, you can't play Mottomlay and Fred in the pivot eight, nine, ten games in a row. You need to start putting Van der Beek and Matic. And I just want Oli to change it up. I want him to be like, OK, Leeds, I'm going to play him with Fred because they're going to leave space in behind. We can counter-attack Leeds. We're not going to be playing possession football against Leeds. But then when Oli plays Southampton, he's going to be like, we're going to be in, we're probably going to have 60, 70 percent possession against Southampton. When we play Southampton, I want Oli to be like, OK, Donny and Matic, you're the, you're the guys for this game because we're going to have possession. In the games that we're going to have possession, I want Donny and Matic. In the games where we're not going to have possession and I need to protect the threats a bit more, we're going to have look Fred. And that's kind of what I want Oli to do. And I just want Donny and Matic to get the game time because when he's played, he's been good. I think Donny and Bruno link up really, really well. And I'd really almost like to see, actually, a Donny, Pogba and Bruno play together. And I, I think Donny's done nothing. That Donny can't do any more. He's been given his chance. He's taken his chance. He's got a pre-season. He's bulked up. He's training hard. He's doing well. What more do you want Donny to do? Score 10 goals in a game? He, he, no, I think if he doesn't start any of the opening six games, because you've got to remember, we've got quite a nice opening six games. If Donny Van der Beek does not start any of the opening six games of the Premier League season, I'll be sitting here going, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, why didn't he sell him? Because that's not fair. That's my stance on it. Shane says, Ndidi is the finished article. We should focus on selling Lingard, Matic, Pereira, James and Jones to make the funds to get Ndidi in January. He's the best CDM out there. To get, in my opinion, I 100% get behind that. I know that Manchester United won't do that. One, because it's not FIFA. And two, because we're not run like Chelsea and Manchester City. But I 100% agree. If I was in charge of Man United, that's what I'd be looking to do. That's 100% what I'd be looking to do. So I do agree with that comment as well. Do smash that like button. Let's go for 100 likes and all of that. And start Varane and Sancho. I would like to see Varane and Sancho start, especially Sancho over Dan James. I think you can start Sancho over Dan James. And as Joe says, Ben White, Nathan Ake and Benjamin Mendy, £140 million. Sancho and Varane, £110 million. Banter. Yeah, I mean, the business we've done there is a uh, thing. Pereira's wanted by Everton fans. Poor Everton fans. You've gone from Carlo Angelotti signing Alan and James Rodriguez to you, you, your rival fans, ex-manager and Pereira. I mean, Everton fans. I, I feel a bit, I do feel a bit sorry for Everton fans. 145 watching guys if you're new please hit that subscribe button hit that like button and all of that yeah everybody if you're new hit like hit subscribe hit share and do all of that could pop Bobby stay and could Camavinga choose to join Manchester United because if Camavinga wants to come to Manchester United there's a strong chance we could get him but does he want Manchester United will pop stay we are top of the league we are fresh in these can we win the league guys can we win the league actually that's a question for you get this in the live chat I'm going to read out a lot of live chats in the live chat, tell me where you think we're going to finish this Premier League season. Tell me. Because I, I know we'll get top four. I don't know we'll get top four. I believe we'll get top four. Um, my prediction for Man United this season is third. But obviously, you, can, you can't. No one can predict the full season, really. But what is your prediction? Let me know. What do you predict for the season? Let me know who you think is going to win. Where do you think we're going to come? Let me know, actually. I really want to see this. 
We're going to be talking about a couple things, by the way, guys. Lingard could be leaving. Paul Pogba could be staying. Neves looks like he's staying at Wolves. Camavinga could be that third and final signing. I believe we're going to sign a midfielder on deadline day. I have a feeling we will end up getting rid of Pereira and Lingard. And I think we will end up getting a midfielder on deadline day. Will it be a fancy midfielder like Indeed? No. I think if we sign a midfielder, we're not going to spend more than £30 million on them. But could it just be like a, you know, like a decent midfielder? Yes. Could it be Sean Longstaff? Possibly yes. You know what we're like. We do have an obsession with the long stars, but I do believe we're going to sign a midfielder on deadline day. And I have a feeling if we're going to sign a player, I would put my money on Camavinga because of all the Fabrizio Romano stuff behind it. Everything Fabrizio Romano has told us, you know, indicates we are in for him. And obviously because of the situation Camavinga was in. And we also talked about how, you know, Harry Kane's a saint and Paul Pogba's a virus, guys. You know, Harry Kane can say he wants to leave Spurs on TV and not show up to training. And just because Paul Pogba's dickhead agent, Mino Rola, makes a few comments but Paul Pogba works hard, trains hard, and has never caused Ole Gunnar Solskjaer or any of the players any problem at Manchester United. He's, he's the devil, and Harry Kane's the same in the media's eyes because of the English bias as well. It really pisses me off. Like, Gary Neville, Paul Pogba's our player. Yes, his agents come out. Yes, what Paul Pogba done is unacceptable. I think Paul Pogba and Harry Kane have both done unacceptable things, but what Harry Kane has done is worse than what Paul Pogba's done because he's not turned up to training and he's forcing a move. Paul Pogba has been nothing but respectful apart from some of his agent stuff. And I, I was really disappointed, Gary Neville, for not actually backing up Paul Pogba, but backing up Harry Kane. I just think, you know what? If Paul Pogba was English and Harry Kane was French, it would be the fucking other way around. We, we all know it. Martial has a stinker. He's slagged off. We need to say he's not good enough. Rashford has a stinker. They don't, they don't want to talk about it. Phil Foden is the star boy in the media's eyes. You know, he can't do anything wrong. But Mason Greenwood, because he plays for the Man United, if he does something wrong, he, oh, he's awful. He's awful. He's awful. Oh. Do you know what I mean? I just hate this. English sort of Man City bias. Do you know what I mean? Uh, Brian Matic is an expensive player. We we getting that this summer. What we need is a player that can do what Brian Matic could have done this could have done this summer. But will we get that player? No. If we sign a midfielder, it could be Ruben Neves, thirty five million pounds. It could be Basuma. It could be Sakaria. It could be Kamavinga. You know they're all good players, but they're not what Brian Matic can do. Ndidi is the closest you're going to get to Brian Matic. Will you sign Ndidi this summer? No. I mean, it, we could, it's possible, but like maybe with Lingard going to Leicester News, possible, but no. But if we sell players, could we get a DD next summer? Yes. Is Ndidi the perfect piece of the puzzle for me? Yes. But are there other players that can do that? Yes. There's Declan Rice, he's English, he's a little bit overpriced. There's a lot of other CDMs out there. I take Kessie from AC Milan. Uh, Cooper Myers is 20 mil. You know what? I take him. I don't know if he can quite do what Matt has just done because, believe it or not, I don't really watch the area Divisi for some reason. Um, but just, yeah, I, I agree. We need a player that can do what Prime Matic could do. But will we get a player that can do what Prime Matic do? Probably not. If we're going to get a midfielder, I, I would put money on Camavinga. But the situation is, if Camavinga doesn't want Man United, we won't get him. But if Camavinga wants United, we will get him. I think because as I've said time and time again, Barcelona can't get him. Madrid can't get him. PSG would have to really bend financial fair play to get him. And PSG have got so many players in their squad. Camavinga wants to leave this summer, but if he can't go to PSG, if he can't go to the Spanish league, where is he going to go? Man United, because there's three teams in for him, Madrid, PSG and United. Madrid and PSG probably can't get him. That's Man United. Man United's open for Camavinga. Camavinga's agent wants him to go to Man United. Rennes do not want to lose him on the free, so they want to sell him this summer. And United have made contact with Camavinga. United have made contact with Rennes. But Butcher Mon has confirmed Camavinga is our dream midfield signing. So if I was going to put money on a signing midfield, it would be Camavinga, but he's not the complete product. He can't do what Prime Matic can do and any of that. But yeah, guys, over 145 people watching. So please hit that like button, subscribe down below, share this live stream. If you're new to the channel, you don't know who I am, you haven't seen my face before, I do daily Manchester United live streams on the channel where I try and make them interactive with the chat. So any questions you have for me in the live chat, I try and read them out and reply to any of my questions in the live chat. I do match reactions to match previews. Friday night will be a match preview to Manchester United versus Southampton. Saturday will be the Manchester United Southampton watch along and match reaction. There'll be a transfer news update video on Tuesday and Wednesday this week as well. So if you want to stay up to date with all the latest Manchester United news and transfer news, subscribe. I get guests on the channel. I interact with the live chat. I talk about fan opinion and I talk about United news. So if that sounds like your stuff, by the way, do subscribe. Um, shouldn't someone shouldn't sign someone for the sake of it? The money for Camavinga could be invested next year towards Harlan and Rice. You make a good point there, but Camavinga, I don't think it's um, uh, signing someone for the sake of signing someone because of his potential. He has that Greenwood potential. He is that star boy, but in the midfield world. So I think if you sign someone 
uh, for the sake of it, like Sean Longstaff, then yes. If you sign him for the sake of it, like Sean Longstaff, yes. But I, I don't think Camavinga will be signing someone for the sake of it. But I, I don't think he's 100% what I need, what we need. But I think because he's such a good bargain for a player for a future, he's a player that I think it would be silly not to go get him if we could get him. If you want my honest opinion. Paul Popper knows that the t- age 28 is his last bumper contract. United need to make an offer he cannot refuse. You know what? If Paul Pogba continues to play like he played against Leeds for the next three, four, five games, I'm all for it. The only way I don't like, I don't want to give players massive contracts. But if Paul Pogba's going to be consistent and perform like that, and I think Leeds was his best ever game in United shirt, if Paul Pogba's going to have a stellar season and he's going to be a fourth semester with the season, then you know what? Fuck off. Give him a new bumper contract because Paul Pogba, Bruno Fernandes, and the top CDM in your midfield, and there's no excuse for Oli not to win the league. Even if Manchester City get Kane. Pogba and Bruno. Name a better duo. I tell you this now, guys. Get in the live chat and name a better duo than Paul Pogba and um, Bruno Fernandes in football. I mean, more, more of like a midfield kind of duo. Name a better duo. Because I, you know, I can't. I can't, by the way. I generally can't right now. So, yeah. Ethan Laird has joined Swansea on loan. Ahmad Diallo could be going to Crystal Palace on loan, actually. Interesting news that we will talk about and all of that. And Kamavinga will consider the move. Eventually, he'll want to join. That's the situation. I think Kamavinga, come into the chance the winner, will just make up his mind. I think you've got to remember that Kamavinga. Like, it's frustrating that he hasn't made up his mind and he has got Man United there and he's kind of just waited a month for this Man United situation. But then again, the situation of Kamavinga is he's 18. It's like me. Like, when I was 18, I was thinking, do I want to go to uni? Do I want to work? Do I want to do this? Do I want to do that? Like, And I was only 18 two years ago, so I can remember being 18. Uh, and I remember when I was 18, I, everything's such a big decision because this is his big decision. And, you know, I never wanted to rush into what uni I wanted to go to. I never wanted to rush into what I wanted to do after school. I think the situation with Camel Wingers, he could be almost doing that with his football career. He's like, he doesn't want to take any risks. He doesn't want to rush into anything. But he, he likes the idea of this, but he just wants to make sure it's perfect. And he's just going to wait to see what other options are there. I think that's the situation with Camel Wingers as well. But I think he could eventually choose Manchester United. And we could eventually sign Camel Wingers. I'm trying to stay positive. I'm trying to stay optimistic. I always try and be positive and optimistic when it comes to Manchester United news and all that. I always, I always try and see the positives and things. So that's really what I'm trying to do with the Camel Wingers situation. But you, it's just a waiting game. You have to wait and see. I think if Lingard goes, we'll push more and more for the Camel Wingers situation, or at least... I'm a feeling, and, and I do think Lingard will leave as well, by the way. If we are sure Popper would play like he did yesterday every week, then he's worth every penny of 500k a week. 100% agree with what Joe's saying there. And don't like see Jones just sit there not playing injured and draining money. And not giving Moran his number four shirt. Phil Jones, you could have done at least one good thing for Manchester United. It's like you're literally trying to torture the fans. You All Phil Jones does is give the medical staff something to do. What? what tell me what else Phil Jones does. At least the medical staff are always busy. The medical staff are really experienced. The medical staff, no, he's probably besties with the medical staff. You know what? He probably spends so much time in medical thing that they're his besties, and that's why he doesn't want to leave. He's like, because Phil Jones knows that no club is going to pay him the wages Man United's going to pay him. No club's going to let him sit on his ass, And he still has the audacity to just go, yeah, I'm not going to give four times Champions League winner and World Cup winner Rafael Baran my number four shirt, even though I've sat on my ass for the last two seasons, draining money out of the club. I'm still not giving him a four shirt. What a knobhead. I'm sorry. What a knobhead. What else can I say? Can He, he can do one. Like Pereira. Pereira's shit. A lot of Man United fans don't like Pereira. But Pereira really tries half the Manchester United. He loves the club. He's willing to take a wage cut so he can leave the club and get game time because he wants what's best for his career. You know, there's there's been not a good enough player for Manchester United and there's having not a good enough attitude. And whether Pereira or Lingard are good enough players for Manchester United, Pereira, Daniel James and Lingard, I don't think are Man United quality, but they have good attitudes. And you can never hate on them because they have a good attitude. You can say they're not good enough, but you can never hate on them. Pereira would take a wage cut to leave Manchester United to play they work hard they train hard they care about the club they want what's best for their career phil jones he does not have a good attitude he doesn't you can say what you want he's clearly doesn't give a fuck about football anymore he wouldn't just give a shut up he just wants money because if phil jones really cared about his career he'd be forcing the move because you know jesse lingard thinks he, he might be good enough to play for united because of what's happened at west ham and jess Pereira was young he thought he could have been good enough but he's realized he's not and he's willing to take a wage cut to go to lazio daniel james is trying really really hard and i think he will leave next season i just think he would have left this season if rashford was injured but phil jones phil jones can do one that's all i'm saying uh tim smith who is a leeds fan you might get roasted in this chat but Big shout out to Pogba. He was awesome yesterday. His passes were not on 
a level. Congratulations on the win. Thank you very much, Tim. I have to say, can Leeds come to Old Trafford every week? I really enjoy playing Leeds. 6-2 and 5-1. Whatever happens, whenever you come to Old Trafford, you give us an exciting game. And I have to say, you know what? Leeds, you've got a good players. And thank you for the respect. But Paul Pogba was completely out of this world, wasn't he? Paul Pogba was out of this world. Andreas Pura is, is a Manchester United player, like Jesse Lingard. They are Manchester United players, and it's a bit, oh, it's a bit, you know. Um, why should any shirt player give a shirt player out for new players? Ego? I just think it's respect. You know, I just think it's respect. Like, why, if you're not playing, why are you going to keep your number? I would take Herrera back at Manchester United, but not really anymore. He's a bit old. Um, Faraz says, what's your say on the midfield situation right now as McFred is not the best option as we can see to go against Leeds because Fred was out of position. I agree. Look, I don't mind rotating and playing McFred every now and then. But I'm in a situation where I don't mind seeing Donny and McTomley in the pivot. I don't mind seeing Donny and Fred in the pivot. I don't mind seeing Popper and Fred in the pivot. But I don't want to see McFred play together. I really don't want to see McFred play together, if you want my honest opinion, because I, I don't think they were. I think you can only play McFred when you know the opposition is going to leave space in behind and we're not going to have possession. I think when you play Manchester City and you know they're going to have possession, and when we play Leeds and we know they're going to have possession, I think you can play McFred. But come Southampton, come Wolves, but we're going to have a lot more possession than Wolves, definitely, and probably more possession than Southampton. I don't want Donny and Matic in the pivot, because when we're on the ball, Donny and Matic are better than McTominay and Fred. Maybe defensively on off the ball, McTominay and Fred are better, but on the ball, Donny and Matic are 10 times level than McFred. So for me, it's purely like in 75% of games this season, we're going to dominate possession. So in 75 against the games this season, I want Donny or Matic involved in that pivot. It doesn't have to be both Donny and Matic, but at least one of them. In the other 25% of the games, you can play McFred. You can rotate McFred in. That's my situation. And even if Oli does decide to play Tom Lai and Fred more games than Donny and Matic, as long as you rotate Oli, because you did not rotate last season. You did not rotate at all. Who rotated the most last season? Chelsea and Manchester City. They won the two biggest trophies in football. Rotation is massive in football. I think he got his subs right versus Leeds and he made his subs earlier, which is his first improvement. You got three, you got, Oli's got three errors to improve on. Rotation, earlier subs, and learning that Fred aren't the way. And he's done the earlier subs. Can he continue that? That's that's what I have to say. Um, Paul Gray, thank you very much for the super chat. Means a lot. Hit that like button and all of that. Thank you very much, Paul, for the super chat. And Diego says only 69 likes needed for 150 likes. So yeah, only 69 likes to go, guys. My lucky number as well. So keep hitting that like button, subscribing down below, and sharing this video and all of that. Um, I cannot see win the Premier League, Fred. Look, we're top of the league now. We're we're embraced that we're top of the league. But you know what? With Tom and Fred, do I think we'll be top of the league by the end of the season? No. And talking of Andreas Pereira, I said I said 20 minutes ago on my stream that I was really positive that Andreas Pereira was going to leave Man United. I said 20 minutes ago on my stream, I said I think Pereira will leave Manchester United. Well, guess what's just been announced? Pereira's leaving Manchester United. I'm not going to look, Pereira, you were a good youngster. You had the potential to be amazing. And all that, but fair play. Um, but he's he's decided he wants to go to Flamengo. Uh, but we do need to reach a deal. I did say I was ninety percent sure Pereira would leave, and some more news is coming out hinting that Andreas Pereira could leave Manchester United. I just realised I've got the fucking um, background from the Leeds game. We'll, we'll we'll put that background on as well. That looks a bit nicer. So yeah, that's some interesting news as well. Camavinga will be done soon. Well, the Camavinga deal has to be done in the next two weeks. So technically, you're right if that happens. Bye bye, Andrea says Nick Morris. And Yellow Stewart says, surely if you have registered squad numbers with the league, you can surely not change them. So Varane has to wait until next season. He, he doesn't, he doesn't, don't worry. And long live Muck Fred. Muck Fred, Muck Fred. Don't we all love Muck Fred, guys? What can I say? The best duo in football. What can I say? For everyone joining the live stream, guys, hit that like button. We're going for 150 likes by the end of the live stream. So all I'm saying is, Keep hitting that like button. Keep subscribing. And also, we are 11 subscribers away from 16.2K. 11 subscribers away from 16.2K. So do subscribe if you're new to stay up to date with daily Manchester United content. This is a United fan channel. We banter rival clubs. We talk about United. I talk about the latest United news. So if you want to banter Arsenal, if you want to trash talk Man City, and if you want to big up all the Manchester United players and be slightly biased to your team, this is the channel for you. Because you know what? I love Manchester United. And because I love Manchester United, I moan about them when we lose. I rate, I love them when we win. You know, it is what it is. And I tell you what, as I've said time and time again, this is the perfect weekend. Tell me what can make this weekend better. Arsenal losing to newly promoted Brentford and we get to absolutely banter Arsenal. 
winning against Leeds 5-1, thrashing them, Bruno Hattrick, Starboy scores, Pogba quadruple of assists, Sancho makes his debut, Varane announced, and then Manchester City lose. How, they, how could this weekend have got better? Only if Liverpool lost. The only way this weekend could have got better is if Liverpool lost. Like, we've had the perfect weekend. So hit that like button for the perfect Manchester United weekend, by the way. And all of that. Shane says, why haven't we actually released Phil Jones? Like, we released Romero, who was fantastic for us, and when called upon. But Jones wasn't played for, like, three seasons. He's still here. Don't understand the board. I don't understand the board either, Joe. Oh, sorry, Shane, sorry. I don't understand the board either, Shane. I don't think anyone understands the board because they're just a bit stupid. The Man United board is a little bit stupid. I was supposed to pin in Lindelof for CDM. Don't want to see it. Do not want to see it. I don't think it will work. I don't think it will work. Um, I'd rather see Tuan Zabi as a CDM, but obviously Tuan Zabi will no, not be playing CDM because he's on loan at Villa, who did concede three goals to Watford, but I'm pretty sure Tuan Zabi wasn't involved in that game. The Tuan Zabi play the Watford game or not, guys, actually? I want to know that. And let me look at Victor Lindelof's stat. Has Lindelof played CDM before, guys? Has Lindelof played CDM before in his career? Uh, let's go overall balance. Do, 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 bear with. Lindelof's played 22 games as a CDM in his whole career, uh, but I still wouldn't want to see it. I was just looking at some Lindelof stats. Uh, breaking news. Alice Talks Football, if you're subscribed. Exactly. Do subscribe for breaking Manchester United news and transfer news. Stay up to stay subscribed for United Gossip. Stay subscribed if you want to ban to Arsenal or Manchester City whenever you can. Because you know what? We love bantering Arsenal. We should pay out Jones's contract. Honestly, I would literally give my whole bank account to Manchester United just so we can get rid of Phil Jones. I just don't like it. Phil Jones is an Arsenal mole. He gets X-rays from Arsenal uh, along with his shirt number. Honestly, you know what would be brilliant? You know what would be absolutely brilliant, guys? It's if Arsenal came in and said, we'll give you 15 million quid for Phil Jones. I, I know it's not going to happen because they spent 15 million on Ben White. But imagine if we could sell Phil Jones, but not just sell Phil Jones, sell him to Arsenal. Like, we could give Arsenal a problem. Because you know how Chelsea are like, yeah, this player's not good enough anymore. Arsenal buy them. I would love to do that with Phil Jones. I think it'd be absolutely hilarious. Um, I'm in tears. Our banter era is over. Well, Arsenal have always been banter FC. Even though we were banterable, luckily for us, Arsenal are always more banterable. But our banter era is coming to an end. Because right now, it's not... Right now, top four, everyone everyone predicts top four to be United, Liverpool, Chelsea and City. It's United, it's like, there's the top six, but there's the top four. United, Liverpool, Chelsea and City are all good teams. You can't really banter them. Well, Arsenal are shit, um, Spurs are shit. Like, we are, we are a good team right now, so we're not that banterable at the moment, which is brilliant. Lindelof played CDM before. Yes, Lindelof's played 22 games in CDM. What I'll do is actually, I'll share my screen with you guys. Let's look at some football stats. Let's look at, name, name, list the player and I can tell you their stats. List the player, I can tell you their stats. But this is the lovely Victor Lindelof stats. Um, he has played 22 games as a defensive midfielder. So you could potentially try him at CDM, I guess, if you put Varane in. You could potentially try Lindelof at CDM with Varane coming in, playing 22 games as a defensive midfielder. But if I was going to be 100% honest with you, I, I don't really want to see Lindelof play CDM. I, I really don't want to see Lindelof play CDM. I'd rather see Tuan Zabi. I don't think it would work. Let me close and that up, though. Let me get the, the, the news back on the screen and work. Guys, get your questions in the live chat, by the way. Get some questions in the live chat. One love, MUFC. We all love Man United. Say, we are top of the league. Yeah, we are top of the league. Say, we. I, I keep doing that wrong, but we, we're top of the league, guys. I think we should stop the count. Top of the league. Top of the league. Joint top. Joint top, remember? Do you remember that joint top set, shit? Because we're equal in points of people. We're, we're joint top, guys. We're joint top. But we actually are top this time. Uh, don't play Victor CDM. Play a proper CDM. I agree with you, Axeman. I 100% agree with you there. And Man United first, Chelsea second, City third, Liverpool fourth. I'd like to see that. I'd like to see that 100%. Will we see that? Hopefully. Probably not. I don't think we're going to win the league. So every week we're top of the league. I'm going to be singing, we are top of the league. Say we are top of the league. Every league we're top of the league. Every week we're top of the league. I'm going to be gassing us. Knowing you and I, well, this time next week we'd have lost to Southampton. We'd have to say, we're well, shit. Not Fred. Not Fred again. We're well, shit. But like, why we're in a good... But this is the thing. There's not many weekends where Man United fresh leads, Arsenal and City lose... And we're top of the league. You don't get that much as a United fan, especially in the last eight to ten years. So embrace it. Be happy. That's all I'm saying. But bye-bye, Pereira, and all that. Get your comments down below in the live chat. 
is there an update on Camavinga? Same as yesterday. Well, I didn't really do a transfer news video yesterday. So, basically, the Camavinga news, there's a lot of Camavinga news, but a lot of it is old news. But the Camavinga news is basically, because because Camavinga liked Greenwood's post on Instagram, it means he's going to come to United, surely. Surely. Surely, guys. He's liked his post on Instagram. He's definitely coming to United. 100%. I am joking, by the way. I am joking, by the way. Now, the situation is with Camavinga. I've said it time and time again. His idol was Paul Pogba. Man United want Camavinga. Romano, for which Romano said, Manchester United made contact with friends. Manchester United made contact with Camavinga. Manchester United view Camavinga as a dream midfield signing. Camavinga is choosing what he wants to do. Now, PSG Madrid and Manchester United want Camavinga, okay? Now, the Spanish teams, whether it be PSG or Barcelona, financially cannot get Camavinga. So it's between Man United and PSG to get Camavinga. Now, Camavinga might prefer PSG because it's in Spain, but Camavinga's got a lot of competition to get in that PSG squad. And PSG, because of Messi, would have to really bend the financial fair place to get Camavinga. And Rennes do not want to lose him on a free next summer. So Rennes are literally like, leave. Can you leave? Can you leave or can you stay? Can you leave or can you stay? So Rennes are pushing for Camavinga to leave. Uh, Camavinga's agent is pushing for him to move to Manchester United and Man United are moving, pushing for the Camavinga deal. And I think the situation with Camavinga is, yes, he knows United have been interested for a month and he still hasn't made up his mind about where he wants to go. So maybe he doesn't want to go to Manchester United. And I have a feeling that if, you know, if Camavinga wants to come to Manchester United, we will sign Camavinga, I think. But if Camavinga doesn't want to go to Man United, we're not going to get him. But I think with Camavinga, you've got to remember he's 18. And I, I said this right earlier in my live stream. When I was 18, I just left school and I had to think, I did a gap year when I left school and I had to think, do, did I want to go to uni? Did I want to get a job? Did I want to do an apprenticeship? What did I want to do with my life? And then when I decided to go to uni, I was like, what uni course should I do? What uni's best for me? Like it was a big decision to make and it's a big decision for Camavinga to make. And he does need time to make that decision. So I think we'll find out what's going to happen with Camavinga to Man United the next two weeks, of course, because the transfer will move. But I'd say if we're going to sign a player, it will be Camavinga because we know we want a midfielder. So that's what I have to say regarding Camavinga to Manchester United. Are you sure Lingard is out? Well, Lingard, Lingard out means that Camavinga in is more likely or midfielder in is more likely. But I couldn't put money on Lingard leaving. I'm 99% sure Pereira will leave because we know he wants to leave. We know Man United wants to sell. And we know Andres Pereira is more than willing to take a wage cut to leave Manchester United. Sorry if my camera's a bit shit. Focus. My camera's not really focusing. Uh, Lingard, I think, well, is a Chris Smalling. You know how we thought Chris Morland was going to leave, but then it looked like he was going to stay, and then it looked like he was going to leave, and then we wanted more money for him, and we were in negotiations with Roma, but we wanted more money, and then we ended up selling him on deadline day. I think Lingard could go on deadline day. I think United want £25 million for Lingard. No one wants to pay more than £20 million. I think come deadline day, we'll give in and be like, okay, look, you know what? £20 million, we'll take it for Lingard. I think that's what Man United could be doing. Uh, we have some more firepower for man for man than any other team in the country. I see this team breaking record. I mean, if Man City get Kane, I think their attack beats us. But let's actually let's look at it. So yesterday we didn't we didn't have Sancho for seventy five percent of the game. We didn't have uh, Amadiallo. We didn't have Rashford. We didn't have Cavani. We barely had Martial, and we, we scored five goals. Um, fucking hell, my camera won't focus, so you don't have to look at my eyes. That's a really horrible view for all of you guys. So I do apologise. Can you focus? Can you focus? That's focus. Sorry, it really bugs me when I can't focus. I think in terms of attack, we look insane. I think in terms of attack, we look insane. Hi, Alice. We are top of the league. I say we are top of the league. You are correct. Uh, Diego said he would like Ahmad on loan at Palace. We need to cover the wing as Eze is injured. And uh, we also need experienced defenders, but I don't want Phil Jones. Not sure we can afford his wages anyway. I mean, I don't think anyone wants Phil Jones. I lo look, Ahmad Diallo could go to Basel or Crystal Palace on loan. And I 100% hope that Ahmad Diallo goes to Crystal Palace on loan. Because why send a player on loan to the Swiss League when he's going to be playing in the Premier League? And the Premier League Cup wants him. If, if I think Ahmad Diallo is a baller. And I think Ahmad Diallo... I think I would play Ahmad Diallo at United. And I think he would more, he'd be good at Crystal Palace. I think Ahmad Diallo is one of them players that when he's on the ball, he looks sick. And I really hope he goes to Palace on loan. And I really hope he gets the game time at Palace. Even though with Palace having Vieira, Vieira in, we don't know if Palace... Palace, Palace I think Palace's season is going to go two ways. Vieira does really, really well. Gets like an 11th place finish and everyone's like, oh, well, well fair play back Palace. Or they stink it out. But even if they stink it out, I still think and, um, Ahmad Diallo will be a good player. Because he's played with weak Man United players, you know, when we did the rotations where they look good. So I really want Amity Allen to go to Palace on loan. I actually think he'd be a really, really good signer for them as well. Um, we're three likes away from 100 likes, although you said that three minutes ago. Guys, keep hitting that like button. Let's go for 150 likes by the end of the live stream. So if you haven't hit that like button, do uh, hit that like button. If only we could troll United in real life as we do in FIFA. Yeah, I feel like all of us here who have FIFA probably do a FIFA career mode where we're spending 200 million every summer for Man United and we're selling Phil Jones. Every FIFA career mode I've had, I'm pretty sure I've sold Phil Jones for the last four years in every career mode, and I've probably brought players like Mbappe and stuff. 
would absolutely love United to do that. Uh, and Bappe, sign them, please. Well, you know what? I am in charge of Manchester United, if you didn't know that, guys. I actually, um, I'm, I'm actually a glazer. I'm in charge of United and I'm going to go sign Mbappe right now. So I'll just bring him up. You know, what can I say? I mean, I'd love it if we signed Mbappe, but we won't. You top on goal difference and calling out all the stat lovers and he, he and has this ever happened? No Drews on the first week of the season. Um, not sure what you want about there, but we are top of the league. So we are top of the league. Say so we are top of the league. Um, can we do a bigger bid than Liverpool? Yeah, we can out with Liverpool. Easy. And Liverpool have only signed Canate. Alice, are you doing a transfer deadline day li live stream? Yeah, I should be doing a transfer deadline day live stream. If I'm not, that would be weird. I would definitely be live on transfer deadline day. I would like to do a long live stream on transfer deadline day or maybe do a 12 o'clock live stream and a 5 o'clock live stream. I'd do two live streams for like two hours long. But they'll definitely be live throughout most of the transfer deadline day. I will. Um, imagine what this team will do with Cavani, Varane, Sancho and Rashford in it. Frightening. Yeah, remember these guys were bad. Well, only Sancho was involved versus Leeds and we absolutely bombarded them. So, yep. It's not Camavinga United. Why are you selling Nevers or Sal? The Nevers and Sal stuff's gone stale, but if we sell Lingo, I think the Nevers and Sal links could heat up. We've still got two, two weeks left, but, you know, it takes United two weeks to announce a play after signing them, so we probably won't sign in at this rate. But, yeah, glory, glory, Man United, and I reckon Man United will be title contenders for sure this season with the squad you've got now. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. I still think we need a CDM to be consistent title contenders. I think... I think you can't judge a season off Leeds because Leeds play a very different way to the rest of the league. So it's hard to judge a season just off Leeds. Um, but yeah, I think we've got, I think we'll definitely get a top four and I think we have potential to challenge. I think we have a really, really good squad, but I still think if we really want to win the league, we need a CDM. I don't think you can win the league with McFred. I really don't think you can win the league with McFred. Any questions, by the way, get them down below in the live chat. And we are nine subscribers away from 16.2K. We are nine subscribers off 16.2K. So if you're not subscribed, I don't know what you're doing. Go subscribe. We're not, we've got over 100 people watching, and I just need nine of you to subscribe so I can hit 16.2K. So please do subscribe if you're not subscribed. And if you need a reason to subscribe, it's, it's a Man United channel. I interact with a lot of my live chats. I talk to a lot of people in the live chat. I do daily Manchester United news um so if you want to step up with united news if you want to know when we signed a player if you want to know if we're close to signing a player if you want to know when we sell a player if you want to see me react to games if you want to see watch longs match previews and then just fan opinions and stuff this is the channel to subscribe to and we're nine of you guys subscribing away from 16.2k so do subscribe and all of that sorry dyslexia that has happened um uh, was no draws this weekend oh no draws this weekend you were correct there sorry i misread that and Graham Souter still doesn't acknowledge Pogba. Why is he so annoying and acting like a brat? He is a brat, isn't he? It's just irrelevant. As my favourite thing was, it was it was the rapper Dave. He said, um, when kids want to grow up, they say, I want to be Messi, I want to be Ronaldo, I want to be Ronaldinho, I want to be Kaka. He said, he was like, no one's ever said they want to be Souness. He's, I don't know why Souness is giving it all this when no one gives a shit about you. No one cares. No one wants to be you. If you do want to be Souness, that's a bit sad. But yeah. He's a twat. He's just got a Paul Popper agenda. I don't know what it is. He always hated Paul Popper. He always hated Jesse Lingard. And he's always he, he was bum licking the Glazers. He just hates United. He's just a bitter, sour man with agendas. Like, there's like, you know, I don't like Manchester City. I don't like some Manchester City players. And I love bantering Manchester City when they lose. But I'll always be honest. I'll sit there and go, you know what? Kevin De Bruyne is better than Bruno Fernandes. But I think Bruno was better last season. I think Bruno should have won PFA Player of the Year over Kane to me. Really, Kane, Kane should have won it. I won't be bitter about my rival team, but soon as we could win, we could beat Liverpool 12 0, and he could be saying, Well, I don't think that was a penalty for United. I don't think that was a penalty. I'm just like, Shut the fuck up. That's what I think about Graham soon. I just don't know how he. It's just so shit, isn't it? It's just shit. Um, as Nick says, Cavani back in training. Yeah, I don't think he'll. Be, I don't think he'll start versus Southampton, but he'll probably be on the bench because he's only just got back to training. And Jaden Sancho, yes to Manchester United for 2021. Jaden Sancho, yes X. And United's fitness levels against Leeds was excellent compared to the start of last season. Yeah, I think having a preseason really helped us. I mean, fitness levels look really, really good, and I think that's something Ollie's probably working on, just getting that fitness level up and all of that. Guys, do subscribe if you're not subscribed to the channel. By the way, we are six. Six subscribers away from 16.2k. We've got over 100 people watching. So if you're not subscribed, I don't know what you're doing because we need six of you to subscribe and then we will have hit 16.2k. So that'd be really awesome if you could subscribe and all of that. Just in, Andreas Perot has decided to go to Flamengo agreement 
uh, between two clubs still needs to be reached. So it looks like Pereira is going out. That is the just in in terms of Manchester United news. So it really, really, be, it's really good to get a player out. Hopefully he doesn't go on loan. Hopefully it's a permanent move. Ethan Laird, talking of loan deals, has completed his move to Swansea City, by the way. And Cavani um, has returned to Manchester. Will return to Manchester United training. Tuesday or Thursday, and you know, Brad obviously was announced yesterday, which was absolutely but You have to admit, this is what's so funny. The Greenish announcement had 200 City fans and it's a hundred million pound player, but our Varane announcement had 80, 70, 80,000 United fans. The, the Varane announcement was five million times better than the Greenish announcement as well. It, it just makes me laugh. Because you know when Man City won the league, this is the one thing that makes me laugh about Man City. When Man City won the league, they had some cameras outside Man City, outside the Etihad, and there was a couple of people. But when Man, if Man United won the league, you know, think think what we did. Look at the Glazers out protest and times that by ten. Look at the Glazers out protest and times that by ten. And that is what would happen if Man United won the league. Like the, the City is such a small club, um, and all of that. My body is ready to see Eddie Cavani, Robin Hood celebration again. Exactly, exactly. And Serge says apparently off right side rules changed. That's why Bruno's goal stood. He's knew how to take advantage of it. Magnifico. I think the offside rules changed, but in a good reason. I think with offside, it, it used to frustrate me that they rule out such bad goals. I think for me, offside, just do a normal sized line across the feet. And if 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 you know, if you can't tell, give the goal. You know, we don't need to be getting out those little arrows with the fingertips and stuff. I think it's pointless. I think I really like the new offside rule because as I said about offside, you know, you want it to be fair. And if they're offside, they're offside. But I think it's just for me, it's just get a line across, look at the feet, stop, you know, pinpointing, you know, it's millimetre by millimetre. You know, you have to give the strike a benefit of that because I'm fed up of offside ruling out good goals and all of that. Um, what do you think about Phil Jones? He'll probably stay, but I hope he leaves. I don't know why we just don't go out and terminate his contract. I mean, look, I, personally, I would go out and terminate Phil Jones's contract. Will United do that? Probably not. Because I, I don't know why. I don't know why. But what I do know is that I am six subscribers away from 16.2k. So if you're not subscribed, guys, subscribe, subscribe. Go down below, subscribe. Because we're so, so close. I want to hit it by the end of the live stream. But we're probably not going to be able to. Because I am going to end the live stream in a minute. But if you aren't subscribed, I would recommend subscribing. By the way, any last chats to get in before the end? Of, I'm going to end the live stream in like the next five minutes. So any chats you want to get in before I end the live stream, by the way. Uh, and I'll try and answer as many chats as possible. Uh, this guy says Maximu won. There's only top of the league because every team has three points. It's only just started. Soon they will drop. And I, 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 I'm just taking. I'm just taking the piss. By the way, I'm just like I don't think we're going to be top of the league kind of the season. So every week that we are top of the league, and this time next week we might not be. I'm just going to be going. We are top of the league. Say we are top of the league. Just because I'm, I'm a United fan, I'm embracing it. You know. Let's get to channels with 17k subs. As Diego says, but yeah, you've got a couple of seconds to put any live chat questions in you have for me before I do wrap up the live stream. And if you don't have any chats, live chats for me, just go subscribe, go subscribe to the channel and all that. Because we are six subscribers away from 16.2k, so it'd be amazing if we could hit that. And it's not too late to join the FPL team, by the way. Um, I know I know you've missed game week one, but if you do want to join the FPL league for FX for AB, feel more than free to join that, by the way. And now Kane says, Alice, what's your thoughts on Arsenal? Thoughts on Martin Ergard? I think he's a really, really good player. And I think he'd be good for Arsenal. And uh, so I'm a United fan. You're a great YouTuber. Thank you very much. I'm a United fan as well. If you are new to the channel, daily United content, banter in City, banter in Arsenal, bigging up United, being a bit biased to our players, and daily United news is what you want to see. But guys, let me address the one or two last chats. Do you think there'll be any movement in the coming days for the Camavinga transfer? Possibly. I, I don't know. It really depends on what Camavinga's mind is. But I think if there's going to be any updates, it will come in the next week because you've got two weeks after the chance to win. So I do think we'll, we'll this time next week, we'll really have an idea if, if anything's going to happen or not, if you want my honest opinion regarding Camavinga. Paul Popper won't go to Real Madrid. They can't afford him. It, Paul Popper's not leaving the summer and he could potentially sign a new deal. But we'll have to wait and see what happens. But I am going to wrap up the live stream here, by the way, guys. If you had any questions for me in the live chat and I did not read them out, I do apologise. So if you want me to address any of your questions that I didn't address in today's video, just subscribe, put the post notification bell on and comment any questions you have for me in the live chat that I didn't answer in tomorrow's video. I'll be live tomorrow with a transfer news update video. So any questions for me, pop them in tomorrow's video and I will try and answer them in tomorrow's video. So to do that, subscribe, post notifications on and watch tomorrow's live stream. Hit that like button if you haven't already. We're going for 150 
50 likes. So just before you leave, just smash that like button. Share the video with your friends. And of course, subscribe if you're new. Thanks everyone for watching. Thanks everyone for getting involved in the live chat. Really good stream. Really good people in the live chat today. Uh, thanks everyone for tuning in. See you next time. Bye.